Hi everyone, it's Aga from Eureka Crystal Beats with another fun beading video for you. Today we're going to be embroidering this amazing pair of earrings with Krakowski crystals. Before I get started, just a quick reminder to check out the rest of the channel and if you like what you see, if you've learned anything, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you always know when we post new stuff. First of all, let me tell you about the materials I'm going to use to make these earrings. Uh, first of all, you're going to need the centerpiece, which is the Krakowski crystals. Uh, here I have Rivoli, size 12 millimeters, with this amazing sort of a patina effect. You are also going to need a beading foundation. I have Lacy Stiff Stuff in white, and I'm going to color it with a Sharpie. Then you're going to need thread, and I'm using Nymo thread in a matching color. And you're going to need needles. Here I have this really nice color cutter needle. Size 12 is the finest, and that's what I'm going to be using, but you can use uh, size 11 or even size 10 will be all right, I think. You're obviously also going to need beads, and for this I'm using Three types of beads in the same shade. I really like monochromatic works and in connection with the crystal, I think it really looks classy and chic and nice. So I'm going to be using uh, Miyuki Delica beads for the bezel. I'm going to be using Toho round size 15 beads to finish off the bezel and to hang the ear wire. I'm going to be using Toho size 11 beads for the edge and for the embroidered row of beads right here. You're going to need two sizes of cup chain for these earrings as well so that they dangle nice when you wear them. This is size 4 millimeters and this is 3 millimeter cup chain. If you just buy one pack of each that will be uh, exactly as much as you need. Another thing you might need is a piece of hard paper or carton. Here I have one that I got with my socks, I think, or something like that. I use it to make my work stiffer because I like them on the stiffer side. To glue this all together, you are going to need glue. I'm going to be using E6000. Just remember to be in a well-ventilated space when you use it because the fumes are kind of not nice. And to finish the back. I'll be using Ultra Suede in this pretty grey colour. You are also going to need ear wire. You can use any ear wire that you like that has a loop. I will be also using pliers to tighten these up. And finally, to cut off the excess foundation and the excess Ultra Suede, I will be using scissors. All right, let's get on to it. The first thing to do is to cut out the required amount of base material. What you're going to need, more or less a square with a side that is roughly 1.5 inches. And the earring is going to be a circle, so don't, don't worry about it being too even or too exact. Just about 1.5 inches. That's it. And I'm gonna cut it out now. As I said, you just need to eyeball it because it's just going to be roughly that. Not exactly, and it's going to be round. What you need to do is to roughly determine the center. You are also going to need another smaller piece of backing because the way I'm going to glue this Rivoli crystal on the backing in order to bezel it is I'm going to elevate it a little bit so that it's not like deep in the foundation but a little bit elevated above it. And for this purpose I'm going to need about as much foundation as is the size of this Rivoli, which is 12 millimeters. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a tiny little hole in it that is smaller than the crystal itself. That is roughly half of its size. And I'm gonna stick the crystal on it and then cut off the excess so that it just has a little support around the edge. You can do, in, do it with an X-Acto knife or a wallpaper knife. Or you can do it with scissors like this, cutting into the middle. I always start by cutting a little X like this and then I cut out a round shape of it in the middle. We're going to do like a pillow on which it is going to rest. Okay. This is more or less enough. There's a little bit peeking out. We're going to bezel around it with beads anyway, so it doesn't have to be very exact. What I'm going to do now is to use the glue. Since it doesn't have an exact tip and it gets a little bit stringy, I like to use a toothpick to take just a little bit of the glue. And I smear it a very, very thin layer along the edge of the crystal. It just needs to hold for the time of us bezeling around the crystal. Okay. And now you need to hold it for just a minute and squeeze it to the edges. Okay, now this glue takes several minutes to hold and over. 24 hours typically, 48 hours would be best to take hold. So I'm going to wait several minutes. Meanwhile, while it dries, I'm going to make a little X hole in the middle. And I'm making a tiny hole so that I can feel when I put it in here more or less where the middle is and if I'm putting it on it correctly. Okay, I allowed it to dry for several minutes and now, gently, because I don't want to unstick it, I'm going to cut the excess of the foundation just along the edge. We want it to be more or less even with the edge. Okay, and now what we have is a cabochon that is more flat in the back than a rivoli and it will be a little bit elevated so it will be better exposed, better showing in the earrings. It won't be kind of buried between the beads and the cap chain. Okay, now it's time to glue it to the foundation, but first I'm going to color it. Okay, well I think actually a lighter colored sharpie would be better, but I don't have a lighter colored sharpie, so that's the best option. Okay, I'm gonna wait a minute until it dries. Okay, it's time to glue the cabochon on. This time I'm just going to go straight from the bottle. Now I can feel where it is in the middle, more or less. Then you just need to do a little squeezing. And again, wait. It would be best if you wait 24 or more hours to make sure that the glue has taken hold and that the crystal won't fall off while you bead. So see you in a minute when this is dried and we can start beading. I am ready with the gluing. As you can see, the crystal is on an elevated position slightly. And now I can proceed to bezeling it with either Miyuki Delicas or Toho Treasures. Typically you want to use about half a wingspan of thread. And as I've shown before, I don't actually tie knots. And I just prefer to burn the end of my thread so that it creates a tiny little 
ball. Okay, I'm gonna start bezeling by embroidering the beads onto the backing around the stone, around the crystal. I'm gonna start with adding two beads, putting my needle through the foundation and roughly two beads away from the place I came out. And I'm gonna go back through the last one. So I'm pushing my needle through the foundation in between the beads and I'm going through the last one that I've added. And I take another two beads, put my needle through the foundation roughly two beads away from the previous two. I go out in between the beads with my needle and through the last one that I've added. You're going to need to add 15 of those pairs, so 30 beads in total, in order to make a full circle and uh, you are going to need an even number. So you're going to be adding pairs and make sure that you end up with adding a full pair and not a single bead because we're going to bezel the crystal using the peyote stitch which requires the beads to be even and I'm going to show you why. I'm just gonna continue adding the beads and then when I finish the round I'll show you what to do next. As you can see I've almost finished the round. I'm just going to add the last pair of beads the 15th pair of beads, adding them here as if I were just going on, continuing on the, down the line, going out between the beads. And now I'm going through the last bead that I've added and the first bead that I added in the beginning. So I need to go through these two beads. like that. And you will notice that every other bead that you've added is kind of a little bit more loose and that they're not quite even. So like this is a little bit more up and the next one is a little bit more up. This one here. Now what we're going to be doing, we're going to be adding one bead, skip one bead from the row that we just added and go through the next bead. So my thread is coming out of this bit bead here. I'm skipping the next bead and I'm going through the bead after so that this bead that I'm just adding comes up on top of the bead from the previous row. And now I take one bead again, I skip one bead from the previous row and I go through the next bead. So we are going to be going through every other of the beads. That's peyote stitch and that's what it will look like. Again, I'm taking one bead, I'm skipping one bead over, and I go through the next bead. So this is the bead that I just added. And I just go around doing the same thing, skipping one bead and going into the next bead and every other bead from the previous row, like that. So I'm just going to continue doing that until I reach the last bead of the previous row. I'm about to add the last bead in this row. There's just one slot right in here. So I'm going to go through 
this bead here, which is the first bead of the first row, I think, and through the first bead of the second row. So this is what it looks like, completing the circle and going up. So I'm going to do the exact same thing one more time. So I'm going to go one more round, adding one bead, skipping one bead and going through the next one. In this case, it's a little bit easier because you can already see the slots where the new beads in the new row are gonna be, like here and here. So I'm going to skip this one and go through this one here. Go through the slightly elevated beads. So this one's next. And you just make a full round until you close the circle. Now I'm about to close that row. So there's only one spot left. I'm going again through these two beads so that my thread is out the first bead in this newest row. Now I'm not going to make another row with Toho Treasures or Delicas depending on what you use. I'm going to do this with size 15 beads. And this is going to be exactly the same only with smaller beads which is going to cause this row to be a little tighter, which is going to in turn hold the crystal in place and look nice bezeling it. So again, skipping one and going through the next one. Now I'm finishing this last row and what I like to do just to make it nice and snug, I like to go through this last row, which is through the Delicus and the 15 O's once again. Okay, once you're done bezeling your crystal, it's time for the cap chain. You're going to need one piece of 4mm cap chain and one piece of 3mm cap chain for the pair of earrings. And since we're making earrings, we're going to cut it, each of these, in half. Now, you can use scissors, but you're going to eventually make them blunt. So, I like using cutting pliers for cup chain. Now, I've cut my cup chain into two pieces each. I'm going to use one 4mm piece and one 3mm piece for each earring. Okay, what I want to do now is to attach these cap chains to the earring and I want to do the bigger one first nice and even and then the smaller one and I'm going to attach them up until here so that the rest just dangles like that it's gonna be so shiny See where my thread is, it's here, so I'm going to start here. So this is the middle of the cap chain. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to go with my needle through the foundation and stitch the cap chain to the foundation in between the stones of the cap chain. Like that. And what I like to do is I like to go over this piece of metal in between the stones twice each time. And I like to hold the stones as close to the bezel crystal as possible. And also I like them to be as snug and close together as possible. So not like this, more like that. But it's really hard to mess up with this cup chain because it's high quality and it doesn't go apart that much. 
So I just start in the middle of the cup chain and I go twice over the metal between the stones in the cap chain until I've reached so this is the half in here so I need to go this much until this so I go between these two, these two, these two and then these two and the last time in here so one, two, three, four crystals I sew between. Okay, so this side is done. This is the middle, and I have sewn in between these two, these two, these two, and these two. I'm going to saw this part as well, but I'm going to do this after I finish this side so that they're as close to one another as possible as close to the center and even as possible. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to end my thread and start on the other side. I'm going to cut some more thread because this is not going to be enough. This is my center so I'm going the other way in between the stones and again I'm going to saw in between one two, three, four stones because this one is the center. Right, as you can see they're nice and even and we want to keep it that way. So we're going to stitch in between these two like that so that they meet in here. So I'm not pushing it exactly to the side of the bezel, but kind of at an angle. Like this, and this is going to be symmetrical. I'm going to go to the other side and attach this. This is where you might want to use some glue to just to make sure that they are nice and even and symmetrical. But I'm just going to freehand it. And in this triangle out there, we're going to add some nickel colored beads. So don't worry, it's not going to remain empty. And another stitch. All right, to secure them, I'm going to go in between these but very closely to the crystal I'm coming from, like here. And again. And now on the other side, just making sure it's symmetrical. So I'm going to finish my thread in here and go back to the middle to attach the smaller cap chain. Okay, now I'm going to take the smaller cap chain and again look for the middle. I'm looking by the number of stones and again we have the middle in between two of them. And I'm just looking for the middle stitch here, which is this. And I push my needle through around there and again stitching in between the stones only once this time is enough because it's a smaller cup chain and again I'm going to go this way in between the stones trying to keep them nice and close together As you can probably see, my thread is kind of frayed 
already from hooking on all the claws that keep the gap chain together and keep the stones in place. You can see how frayed it is right now. So you need to be careful so that it does not hook under any of these claws like I just did now. And what you can do to prevent it is to hold it down as you pull through. Hold it down in between these stones with your finger. And I'm going to continue sewing in between the stones more or less to the same level on which I made the last stitch on the larger cap chain. So that's going to be the last stitch on this smaller cap chain right here in between those. I'm going to go in between them twice so that this last stitch is super fast and super nicely fixed to the foundation. I'm going to finish my thread, start another one because this one is really frayed and go back to the middle so that I can do the other side. Okay, I'm done with stitching on the cup chain and I may proceed to adding one final row on the edge and we're gonna top it off with size 11 Miyuki round or toho round. I have toho beads here and I'm gonna stitch them on along the edge starting here at this crease at this um, angle here and I'm gonna go around using the stitch in which you add two beads and go back by three. So I'm starting with two beads, stitching them onto the foundation, roughly two beads away from where I, where my needle came out. And I go back initially through both of them. And now I add another two beads Stitching them onto the foundation roughly two beads away from the previous two beads. And I push my needle through the foundation in between the first two beads, which is three beads back. And I go through these three last beads. You can also use different stitches. You can use a stitch in which you only add one bead and you go back through two. You can add two beads and only go back through one. For all the other stitches you can use to embroider straight lines, go to my first ever video for Eureka Crystal Beads, which is also on this channel. And in, the, in this video I also explain in more detail how you embroider straight lines. And now I'm just going to use the same stitch to go all around this earring, all the way up to here. Okay, I'm done with this row of 11 size beads. What I'm going to do now, and now my thread is on this side, I'm going to fill in this hole with one 11 size bead, which I'm going to add in the middle. Be careful so that your thread doesn't get caught in these tentacles of cup chain. <laughs> I'm adding one size 11 bead in the middle. Again, my thread really wants to go straight. And then I'm adding another two size 11 beads, just thinner ones possibly, on the sides. 
kind of at an angle. And if size 11 doesn't fit, that's okay, just use size 15. There, that's that's what it looks like. I'm also going to add one bead over here in this space, right there, because I don't like empty spaces. Now you can also fill in the spaces in between the larger stones in the larger cup chain like this one and this one and this one and you can fill them with size 15 beads or you can just leave them like that as i said earlier i really like uh, filling up any space that i have in my work so i'm going to prepare some size 15 beads and try to fill up the spaces that I have in between those larger stones in the cup chain. So I'm starting with a new thread. And I'm adding one bead in between those spaces, in between those stones. And I'm lining them up like this rather than like this because these spaces are shaped more this way than this way. So I wanted to fill up those spaces as fully as possible. Alright, we're nearly done. All the embroidery is finished, now the next step is cutting off the excess foundation. Uh, if you want to feel extra safe, you can also smear a bit of glue on that last row of thread, so that even if you cut something, nothing's gonna fall apart. Okay. You can leave it like this, or you can color the edge with your sharpie. Like this, just remember to let it dry for several minutes so that it doesn't color your fingers immediately. Okay, now it's time for gluing. So I'm gonna need a piece of some hard paper, some carton. You can use anything that you have. So you're gonna need a piece of that and then we're gonna need our ultra suede. So first what I'm going to do is I am going to trace the shape of my earring roughly on the paper. So that's roughly it. And I'm going to cut it out, leaving a bit of a margin, like three millimeters smaller, like that, so that you can sew on the ultra suede and that you can actually make the nice beaded edge. So I'm cutting out the shape. There. I'm just going to clean it up. Okay, as you can see, there's a little bit of a margin where we're going to stitch through the foundation and the backing, the ultra suede, to make the decorative edge. So I'm taking again the same glue, I'm spreading it evenly just a very very thin layer not too much 
and you press it on the work. Okay, I'm going to leave it for a bit. Now I'm taking the ultra suede. Here I have it in this beautiful gray color. You're going to need a piece that is the size of the earring or you can just directly glue it onto the entire sheet and then cut it out so that you don't use too much, which is what I'm going to do. Again, I'm taking the glue and again I'm spreading a thin layer on the back of my work. I'm using the bottle itself but you can also use uh, a toothpick. Now I stick this to the ultra suede and I press gently and I just keep pressing for like a minute so that it gets this initial hold and then all that's left to do is to wait 24 to 48 hours just to make sure that it holds and I'm going to be back to show you how to finish the edge okay now this has dried so I'm ready to cut off the excess ultra suede now I do this looking from the front and I try to cut as close as I can to the edge and I try doing it perpendicular to the edge so not like this or like this just perpendicular so that the uh, edge that I cut is not at an angle at first I cut it just roughly and only then I Try being more detailed and closer to the edge of my work. It's going to be a little tricky under the dangly cup chain, but I just cut it roughly from the front and I cut it on this side. And go back and make a round shape looking at the work from the back like this and here you can also see how far you are from the edge so I have a little bit more to cut okay I'm ready to finish the edge of my work and for this purpose we're going to need size 11 toho beads uh, also you're going to need ear wire here i have this really nice simplistic one i didn't want to add too much because this is i think this is enough of a bling uh, and we are also going to need toho size 15 to secure the wire to the earring okay let's start I'm starting uh, on top of the earring that's gonna be this is going to be the top so I start around the middle so that when I finish I can add the ear wire right away uh, I put my needle through the foundation th through the beading foundation so that I come in between the foundation and the ultra suede and come out right underneath the last row of beads so that the knot or the melted ball at the end of my thread is hidden inside the work. Now I start by taking two beads, two size 11 beads and if you know this already, if you know how to make an edge with a brick stitch uh, you can just go on to the next step you know how to finish your earring but if you don't let me show you so my thread is right here underneath the beads in the front of my work and what i need to do is i need to put my needle through ultra suede and through 
the foundation roughly two beads away from my thread and come out right underneath the beads through the foundation. Pull through. Now you have these two beads on. That's what they look like. And you need to go through the last bead that's added like this. So like you go from the outside where you just came out and you go through one bead so that you go in between these two. This is going to stand straight up. And then you're going to be adding one bead at a time. You're going to go through ultra suede and the beading foundation. Roughly one bead away. Pull through. And go through that bead that you just added from the bottom. Like this. So that it stands up nicely on the edge of your work. And you continue doing that until you finish the circle. Okay, I'm just coming back for a moment to show you, uh, in case you were wondering, how to embroider the edge underneath the dangling cap chain. So you just basically do the same thing. You go through ultra suede and the beading foundation and you just go out on the other side underneath the cap chain. And that's it. You do everything the same. You pull through, you push the needle through the bead. And you pull that and just go on. We're almost there. I'm just about to add the last bead to the finishing of the edge. And if you don't know how to connect it to the first one, I'm about to show you. You add it just as you normally would. You go through it as you normally would. And then you go through the first bead that you added and you go through it as if it was a new bead from the top as if it was the next bead you're adding. And then you go through ultra suede and through the foundation to the front and you go through that last bead that you added. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, you go through the first bead again and pull. And that's it. Now we're going to add the ear wire. I just want to quickly check where is my middle. So this is actually exactly here. In between these two bees, I'm going to dangle a little bit to see if that's where the center is and that's where it is i'm going to need size 15 beads for that and of course the air wire what i like to do you don't have to do this but uh, with with this one i like to squeeze squeeze it a little bit to get the ball closer to the to the wire so that you can be sure it won't fall out. So I take five size fifteen beads. I take my ear wire, just making sure that it's the right direction, like this. I'm gonna go that way. And I'm going through the bead that's on the other side of the center. And I'm going through the bead, slightly directly directing my needle 
from the front to the back through the foundation and ultra suede so my ear wire actually fell off the thread and I have to add it on just making sure it's the right direction once it's blocked by the beads it's not going to fall off so don't worry I'm going back through this bead the second bead in the center and I'm going through all the five beads and the ear wire again pulling tight and I'm going through the other of the center two beads of the edge again from the front to the back through ultra suede I pull tight and I go back and I do it usually about four times okay this time I'm not going to go through ultra suede just going to go through the speed like that pull tight and how I finish all of that is I go through ultra suede and the beading foundation I go out on the other side somewhat between the beads in the final embroidered row and I go through two or three beads with the thread I tie a little knot on this thread between these beads by getting my needle underneath the thread making a little loop and going through that loop and pulling it and then I go through several further beads in this final row and that's how I finish my thread and that's it the earrings complete that's what it looks like from the back and in the front it's super shiny and super dangly so that's it for this video thank you so much for joining me all the supplies that I use to make these earrings you can find at EurekaCrystalBeats.com and a link will be also provided in the description of this video on YouTube. Thank you again and see you for the next tutorial. Bye!